myself dr mary posonia associate professor department of computer science and engineering satyabama institute of science and technology deemed to be university so today we are going to discuss a topic about the deadlock avoidance in this uh, we need to know what is the deadlock deadlock is a situation in which the uh, process cannot continue its execution so we have to avoid this deadlock situation with the support of the bangus algorithm so we will discuss the bangus algorithm now so the deadlock situation arises in the system due to insufficient resources and also it is a circular wait condition say for example if you start from the process p0 p0 is waiting for the resource which is held by the process p1 and p1 is waiting for the resource which is held by the process p2 it continues like that again the process pn will wait for the resource which is hold over the process p0 so none of the process will come for the completion so this situation is called as a deadlock so we have to avoid the deadlock situation with the support of the bangus algorithm or it is also called as a safety algorithm now coming to the step number 1 we have to take the two vectors one is called as a work and another one is a finish so the work is nothing but number of available resources present in the system and finish is nothing but number of process we have to check the status of the process whether it is finished or not so this can be initialized at the beginning that means that is work is nothing but available resources so we have to assign that work is nothing but available and also the finish of i is false at the beginning because the process is not started so coming to the step number 2 so we have to take the first process and first process status is finish of i is equal to false that means the process is initially it is not started so finish of i is equal to false and we have to check the need of the particular process should be less than or equal to available resource if the condition is satisfied then the request is granted after the completion of the process the allocated resources has been released and that will be added with the existing available resource and the, if this condition is not satisfied that means if the requesting resource is exceeding the limit of the available resource then automatically we couldn't grant the request so it will get back to the step number 4 in the step number 4 we have to check the status if the finish of i is equal to true for all the process that means all the i then only we can able to produce the safe sequence we will discuss the safe sequence by seeing your numerical problem so the safe sequence we couldn't able to generate okay. so this is the safety algorithm or the bangus algorithm for understanding the safety algorithm and the bangus algorithm we'll go through some of the numerical problem so this is a given data so a is equal to 10 b is equal to 5 and the c is equal to 7 stands for these are the instances resource instances available in our system so instead of a we can say that number of printers available say for example it is 10 and number of scanners available say for b is equal to 5 so this is for sample labeling that we given that a is equal to 10 b is equal to 5 and c is equal to 7 number of instances available so this is a given data and the allocation matrix allocation is nothing but for we have the five process from p0 to p4 for all the p0 to p4 these many instances has been allocated for all the process p0 to p4 and this is called as representation of the allocation matrix this is given initially this much resources has been allocated for the five process and coming to the maximum matrix as i already told bangus algorithm the major key point is every process must climb the maximum resources before the process execution so the maximum matrix is already given that is the process p not requires the seven instances of resource type a and similar way process p not requires five instances of the resource type b similar way all these requirements maximum requirement is given and these two allocation matrix as well as maximum matrix is a given data and from this and also the total number of available instances is given in the system by using this we how to calculate the available matrix so the available matrix is nothing but so this is your original given instances present in your system out of this present instances this much already allocated so say for example if you are taking the instance uh, resource type a process p0 to p4 how many instances have been allocated so it is 2 plus 3 is 5 5 plus 2 is 7 so out of 10 already allocated 7 so 7 minus 10 is 3 is available like that 
we need to come for the pro, uh, resource type B also. So the resource type B already allocated is 1 for the process P0, 1 more for the process P3. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So 2 minus already available resource is 5. So 5 minus 2 is 3 is available right now. And similar way for C also. So 2 plus 1 plus 3. So 3 plus 2 is 5. So 5 minus 7 is 2. So this is your present available matrix. And from this, we should calculate the need matrix also. So the need is nothing but, as per the algorithm says that, Bangus algorithm says that, the need has to be calculated. This is your maximum claim of the resource required by every process. That should be subtracted with the allocation. This much is already allocated. So maximum I minus allocation is the present need of every process from P0 to P4. Right? So we have to calculate the need matrix also. So for this, the resource instance for the resource type A for the process P0 requires how much we need. Say for example, this is maximum minus allocation. So it is very easy to calculate also. So the maximum is for the process P0, the resource type A, so 7 minus 0. That is maximum minus allocation. So the, and 7, 7 more uh, resource instances needed by the process P0 for the resource type A. And similar way, resource type B also. How much resource type process P0 requires, process P0 requires for the resource type B. And now coming here, that is 5 minus 1, so 4 resource instances, B resource instances required by the process P0. And similar way for C also. So in the C, the maximum need is 3 and already allocated is 0. So 3 minus 0 is equal to 3. In that way, all these entries has been calculated for your need matrix. As per the Bangus algorithm, we have to check whether we get able to generate the safe sequence or not. So when the system is able to produce a safe sequence, then the system is in the safe state. That means there is no deadlock situation arise in future. So that is what we are planning to generate a safe sequence from your given need matrix and we are uh, execute, uh, implementing it. So we have to start with the process P0. So the process P0, the need matrix is given here, we calculated. So the process P0 need is now 743. That means 7 instances of resource type A and 4 instances of resource type B and 3 instances of resource type C. So the requirement of the process P0 is 7, 4, 3. And as per the safety algorithm, as per the Bangus algorithm, if your need is less than or equal to work, if the condition satisfied, that means the requirement, the need of the current process resources should be less than or equal to work or available. Right? So if this condition is satisfied, then you have to grant the request and after the execution, process execution, after the process execution, the resource has been deallocated. After the process completion, the resource has been deallocated and it has been added with the already existing available. So this is the previous algorithm we discussed. Based on that, we are going to solve the problem. So now start with the process P0. So the process P0 need resources are 743. So we have to check with your available. 743, your available is right now, it is 332. So we have to check the condition. That means your present need of the process P0 is 743. It is less than or equal to 332. Condition true or false, we have to check. The condition is false, of course. So we cannot able to grant the request of the process P0. And again, we have to start with the try with the process P1. So now the process P1 need of the resource need is 1, 2, 2. So 1, 2, and 2, it should be less than or equal to, as per the algorithm, it should be less than or equal to work or available. At present, your available is 3, 3, 2. So you are compared with your available resource. Condition is true, so we are granting this request. And after the process completion, the process P1 will deallocate all the resources. It has been added with the available. So you have to ex execute this step. So work is nothing but already available is 332 plus the process P1. After the completion of the process P1, 
P1 will deallocate all the resources. Already allocated is 200. So, after the entire process completion, it will deallocate all the resources. It is also added with the existing available. So, now the total available is 3 plus 2 is 5 instances of A and 3 plus 0 B, 3 instances of B, 2 plus 0 is 2 instances of C. This is your available resources right now. That means 5, 3 and 2. And now, so your process P1 is totally completed. So, you are adding the process P1 in your safe sequence. That means your process P1 is totally completed. Now, coming to your process P2. Start the process P2. So, you are checking that whether you can able to grant the request of the process P2. So, start with the process P2. P2 requirement is 6, 0, 0 should be less than or equal to check with the condition you are available. At present available is 532. So, you check the condition whether able to grant the risk request 600. This is approved and this is approved, but it is not possible because the requirement is 6. You are available resource of the instance A is 5. So, the request is not granted for the process P2. So, P2 has to wait. Again, coming for the process P3. Take the process P3. So, process P3 Process P3 requirement, it is 0, 1, 1, should be less than or equal to you are available. At present available resource is 5, 3, 2. Now compare the condition, yes, you can able to grant. The system can able to grant because the required, the need resource is less than or equal to available. So you are allow the process P3 to execute. After the completion of the process P3 execution, you are going to deallocate all the resources. That means work is equal to work plus allocation. That means already available. Already available is 532 plus after the completion of the process P3, the P3 will deallocate all the resources. That means this is already initial allocation is 211. It is going to deallocate it. So 211. So the total resource available is 5 plus 2 is 7, 3 plus 1 4, again 2 plus 1 is 3. 743 is now available resource. So, 7, 4, 3 is a now available resource. So, process P3 also completed. Once the process P3 is completed, add this process in the safe sequence. Now, start the process P4. So, the P4 need resources are 4, 3, 1 should compare with your available resource less than or equal to 7, 4, 3. Condition is true. So, you are going to grant the request of the process P4. So, after process P4 execution, it is going to deallocate all the resources which is hold by the process P4. So, 743 is already existing resource, 743 plus the deallocated resources by the process P4. P4 is holding 002, so you have to deallocate the resources 002. So, the total resource availability is right now 7 and 4 plus 0 is 4, 3 plus 2 is 5. Once the process P4 is completed, you have to add the process P4 in the safe sequence. Now again, the existing process, the remaining process present in your system, sir, P0 and P2 is not yet completed. So you have to start with the process P0 again, once from the beginning. So you have to start with the process P0. So the P0 requirement is again, it is 743. Now the available resources are 745. This is your present available. So, it should be less than or equal to 7, 4 and 5. So, now compare the need of the resources should be less than or equal to available resources. The condition is true. So, you are grant the request of the process P0, allow the process P0 to execute. After the process P0 completion, you deallocate the resources which is hold by the process P0. So, this can be executed as, so the present work should be already existing available resources is 7, 4, 5 plus the allocated resources which is hold by the process P0. P0 is now holding 0, 1, 0. So, plus 0, 1, 0. So, the total availability is 7 plus 0, 7, 4 plus 1, 5, 5 plus 0 is 5. So, this is your present available resource. So, once the process P0 is also completed, add the process P0 into the safe sequence. Now, only the process left is process P2 is not as executed. Now, you are going to give a chance for the process P2. So, now the process, check the status of the process P2 requirement. So, the P2 requirement is 600. 600. You have to compare the 
available resource. Now the available resource is 755. So we heard the need of the present process P2 is less than the available resource, 755. So the condition is satisfied. You are granting the resources to the process P2 to execute. So after the completion of the process P2, it can be deallocated. What are the resources which is held by the process P2 is deallocated and that also added with the available resource. So after this execution, now the present available resources will be work is equal to existing available 755 plus the resources which is held by the process P2 is 302. That is also added with the available resource. That means 7 plus 3 is 10 and 5 plus 0 is 5 and 5 plus 2 is 7. So this is your initial instances which is given for your system. That is 10 instances of resource type A and 5 instances of resource type B and 7 instances of resource type C. Once the process P2 is completed, you can add the process P2 in the safe sequence. As I said earlier, once the system can able to generate the safe sequence, then the system is in the safe state. That means every process must be come to the completion stage. So from process P1 to P0 to P4, all the process come to the completion state. So in that we can prove that your system is not suffer with the deadlock situation. Hope you understood the deadlock avoidance based on the Bangus algorithm. Uh, so the next video we will discuss about the deadlock prevention. Thank you.